Today I'm going to show you how you can use a countdown timer for your website using Wix code, also known as Corvid. What's up you guys? Welcome back to another Nino tutorial. And today we're gonna to be going over how you can create a countdown timer for your website. So I just went ahead and just put something together here. Uh, as you can see, I have a strip here, I have text, and it's basically my site go undergoing maintenance, okay? I thought this was really cool uh, tutorial that you know I would uh, like to share with you guys. And I was just thinking to myself, huh, how can I actually put a timer on there without having to use the standard timer? Maybe I wanna mix things up, make things look cool and pretty, and whatever you guys want to do or want to design up you can definitely do that here and you can do it manually so let's go ahead and get started and show how you can create that manually only by using Corvid all right so let's go ahead what I'm gonna do here is I have a box here and then a two text boxes right here okay right next to each other text 79 and text 78 okay so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go ahead and copy this so i'm gonna press Control c and then i'm gonna press Control v all right as you can see it actually copied that and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the minutes after this one so we're going to say minutes okay and then we're going to duplicate this here and i'm just going to show you guys how i'm actually really doing it right now just so that you know everybody's on the same page. All right, so we're going to do hours. Okay. And once we do hours, then we're gonna do days and then I'm gonna go ahead and center it up just a tad bit for you guys. All right, so let's say days. Reason why I don't have years on here is because, you know, we're not gonna be doing a full year maintenance. <laughs> so. I'm not going to put years here, but it's easy enough to put years down here if you want it to. Uh, but like I said, I'm just doing something very quick and useful. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and group all of these together and then I'm just going to center them. Okay. And boom, there we have it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and label these things here. I'm just going to label this uh, days. So I'm gonna come down here to my properties and events and I'm just gonna label that days, okay? Then here I'm going to label this hours and then as you can get the gist of it, everything else is gonna be the same, yada, yada. Minutes, seconds, stuff like that. Oh, wrong one. Yep. Seconds. Awesome. So now that we have that all ready and ready to go, what I want to do here now is I want to focus in on my code. So let's go ahead and drag this up just a tad bit. All right. Now in this code, we're just going to put everything in the Wix on ready function. Okay. Uh, or we can actually create our own function. How about that? Let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say function and we're going to say timer and then the parameter is gonna be the parameter. And so that's how we're gonna do it, all right? So let's go ahead and start with getting the date, okay? This is a specific date that you want the countdown to go down to, okay? So let's go ahead and create our uh, countdown date. So we're gonna say let date equal new date and we're going to put this in a format and we're going to say it's going to be for let's see March 17 2021 and at the time we're going to do it is 12 30 uh, and we're just gonna say that's 12:30. You know what? No, let's let's do 
no, I'll just keep it at 1230. Yeah. So we're just going to do 1230 just like that. All right. Now we're going to say, uh, dot get time. All right. Cause we want to get the time of this stuff It's going to put this into a numeric value that we'll have to use in our timer, uh, in our countdown timer. Okay. So this is timer. You know, what? I'm just going to change that to countdown and then say timer. Okay. Now, as you can see, I'm setting the date as this here. Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, let, uh, let's see downtime equal and we're going to set this to a set interval okay so that this interval can keep going uh on and on until the break of dawn until we actually clear that interval and stop it okay so we're going to make that an interval then we're going to put inside of it a function okay so we're going to say function and what we're going to do here is going to get started with that code all right, so this is the gist of the countdown timer. Now, what we want to do is we want to get the actual time that is right now that our visitor is showing right now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and say let now time equal new date, but we're not going to set that date to anything. Okay, we're just going to say new date dot get time. All right. and then semicolon. All right, so now we just need to calculate the difference between the actual date and then also our time right now, okay? So we're just gonna say uh, difference diff, okay, equals, and what we're gonna say is date minus now, okay, now time. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to get the days. Okay. So I'm just going to say days equal, and we're going to use math dot floor. Okay. And we're going to get that time left divided by the amount of days. Okay. So we're going to do the difference divided by a thousand times 60 times 60 times 24. Okay. So there's 24 hours. There's 60 minutes in an hour. There's 60 seconds in a minute. And then there's a thousand seconds within, Oh, sorry. Yeah. A thousand thousandths of a second. Like that's what, that's what the time is all about. <laughs> okay. So, um, that is one of them. Okay. So we got that. We got our days. Now all we have to do here is get the days, then the hours, then the minutes and the seconds. So let me go ahead and type that out real quick. Just give me a second. So as you can see, I have my code right here. And what you can see with this code is that I have the days, the hours, the minutes and the seconds. Okay. There can be a different way that we do this right here. Uh, so if you guys don't want to go through that tedious process, what you guys could do is uh, really just label this a thousand times 60 and then use this a thousand times 60 as like one uh, variable. And then you can use that variable here. And then also you can use that variable here. And it'll definitely save up space if you're looking to save up space. Uh, but there is a method to people's madness. So definitely choose however you want. I'm just going to go with this right now. I think it's just very uh, nice and suitable for me. All right. So as you can see here, we're going to go ahead and get the days. Okay. Just like we did up at the top. So get, uh, we're going to get the text of that element. And what we're going to label it as is days. Okay. Now this is a number. What we want to do is we want to change this to a string. 
So we're gonna say days.toString, okay? And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create the same type of layout for the rest of our elements, just so that we can tie the numbers to those elements, okay? All right, so I think what I want to do here is I wanna create another message, okay? Uh, a message that, you know, that, that it's complete, that the time is complete, all right? And what I want to do here is, uh, you know what? No, I, well, yeah, I do wanna put a message there. So what I'm gonna do here is, since I grouped these together here as a group one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and say group one dot expand, okay? And then I'm gonna put a different element below here uh, so that that can show when it's completed, all right? Um, so let's go ahead and see what I wanna put down. All right, so I actually just created a box here and then also I created a button here uh, for you guys. So go ahead and do that if you will. But uh, this is just to let people go back to the homepage, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that collapsed and that's gonna be box 13. All right, and then this group one, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse as well. As, as, as well. Uh, and then what we're gonna do here is gonna do is below here, we're going to say box 13 dot collapse, okay? So as you can see, we're going to go ahead and expand that once the date hits March 17th at 1230, okay? So right now we are almost done. So all we have to do now is to see what do what time do we have left, okay? Is that time at zero or if it's not, then what we need to do is that we have time left, okay? That we have time to keep counting down. So it's gonna keep going through that interval that we set it up as, okay? And we're gonna go into that in just a few seconds. But just letting you know, we need to create an if else statement here so that if we do have a difference that is not zero, then we need to keep the count going, okay? But if the count is zero, then what we need to do is show that go home, go to home page so that we have finished the maintenance and it is redirecting them back to the main page. If, you know, someone was just stuck on the maintenance page uh, when it was completed, okay? But I highly suggest that if you're gonna use this for a maintenance website, uh, if you're using this for a maintenance page, uh, I highly suggest that you guys get that date just right so that, you know, people won't be waiting, okay? And also when it triggers, it won't take them to a home page that's not complete. So just be wary about that. Uh, I think you guys can set up something where this can be pulled from a database as well. Um, and I actually go into databases in one of my tutorials in the right hand corner as I speak right now. And that will give you a little gist of like what, how do you, how do you go about the collection databases uh, that Wix has to offer? So just go ahead and check that out, and you'll actually know what I'm talking about. All right. And so here, what I want to do is I want to create an if else statement. All right. So if um, if the difference is greater than zero, what we want to do is we want to continue the the time. Okay. So we're just going to put in comments, uh, continue, all right? Continue the time or the timer, all right? And then if all else fails, okay, if all else fails and it comes down to zero, that means that we have reached the time that it's supposed to be completed. What we need to do is we need to clear this interval, all right? So we're gonna say clear, interval and we're going to put that uh downtime in parentheses okay that way we can clear that time out okay uh well excuse me we can clear that interval and it can time out and it doesn't have to repeat itself on that visitor's web page okay so we're gonna come down here we're gonna go ahead and open that 
all right we're gonna expand that box 13 all right which has the go to home page all right by that time we should be good we should be done all right so we're gonna expand that and also at the same time what we're gonna do is collapse the group all right so group one dot collapse all right and as you can see i left my semicolons out so make sure you put your semicolons in there it really doesn't matter too much right now because everything is going line by line but once you get into some complicated code i'm pretty sure that you should use the semicolons to to really like break up and break down each line okay so that is about it i think yeah that is about it so everything is good to go all right and then all we have to do is add the time interval so right now it's only going to hit every single time okay what we need to do this at is a second all right we're gonna do this at the second so what we can do here is we're gonna say uh, a thousand okay so each second so just like we see here this is a thousandth of a second and so i guess that is about it for the countdown timer and that is about it so all we have to do is come up back to our on ready uh function all right and what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and make sure that that group one is actually uh collapsed all right because we won't we don't want to show it just yet we want to show it once we call the countdown timer so we're going to go ahead and collapse that and we're going to call the countdown timer all right we're not going to create any parameter in there so i suggest that you just delete the parameter all right and so right here we actually have a almost working countdown timer all we have to do now is go ahead and test this thing all right so all we have to do is just test this thing and we should be good to go all right so what i'm going to do here is actually i'm going to create an async function just so that everything can go in order and everything can get every uh all of the information can be stored correctly so i'm just going to say a sync and then i'm going to say await new date uh dot get time okay so this will wait for the date actually to get the time and then it will go straight into our uh our interval which is pretty much the countdown timer but we gave it another name which is downtime all right so with all that being said and all that being completed, uh, as you can see, I have my group one collapsed and then also my box 13 collapsed, all right? So let's go ahead, bring this down and let's test this sucker out. All right, so I'm gonna click save because everybody needs to save what they're doing. And once you save it, then head on over to the preview button and press it. And as you can see right here, guys, we have 97 days, 17 hours and 32 minutes and 47 seconds, 46, 45, 44, you know, and that, that is, that is a long time for maintenance. <laughs> so, uh, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know why it's that long. I don't know why. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, this little quick short bit tutorial. Uh, definitely give it a shot and if you guys have any questions drop it below thank you so much for watching you guys and if you like this video hit that like button subscribe if you aren't already and i'll see you in the next video guys all right ciao